Hello and welcome to our quick start guide on how to install a UNV security system. Since most cameras are installed outside, we're going to begin by installing the weather boot onto the cable. This starts by putting the retention nut on, followed by the silicone insert into the weatherproof housing. Once you have that installed, you go ahead and slide it down and screw the nut on loosely onto the bottom of the housing. Next up, we're going to be installing the silicone ring onto the female side of the jack on the camera itself. It's important to note that the ring needs to be straight on all sides. If it is twisted on any of the sides, take the ring back off and make sure it gets put on smoothly so that it'll make a proper seal with the weather housing. Now that we have that part prepped, we're going to go ahead and put a connector onto the cable. We're going to start by stripping the outer jacket. And once the outer jacket's been removed, go ahead and cut off the rip cord, as we will not be using that on this. At this point, we just need to start straightening all the wires. So we'll begin by separating the pairs and then untwisting each set of pairs and arranging them all in 568B wiring. Now we can go ahead and cut off the excess wire and then insert it into an RJ45 connector. Make sure the wires come all the way up to the front of the connector and then put it into your crimp tool and crimp all the pins in place. After verifying that you have a good crimp and all your wiring is correct, go ahead and insert the connector into the camera. Take the weather housing, slide it all the way up. You're going to twist this into place and lock it onto the camera connector. And then once you have seated that, go ahead and tighten down the nut the remaining amount. This is going to give you a fully waterproof seal that will allow your connector to remain outside without oxidation or corrosion. Next you're going to install a connector on the other side of your cable in the same manner as before and you will insert the connector into one of the PoE ports on the back of the NVR. Now that you plug the camera in, it'll begin its booting process. Once it is fully powered on, the NVR will automatically connect to the camera via plug and play. Once it has fully connected, the camera will automatically show up on your live view screen. This process typically takes at least a couple of minutes to complete, so just be patient while the camera is loading. Once it has fully loaded, you will see a live view image on the monitor from the NVR. Once the camera is connected to the NVR, it is already configured to start recording 24-7. But there are a lot of other common setups that people like to use, so we're going to go over some of the more common things such as motion recording and also making sure that your NVR is on the network. So first what we're going to do is adjust the camera for the encoding. This is just to look at the maximum resolution and the frame rate. You have the choice of a lot of capture modes that are already pre-configured. You can select any one of those. And then U-Code is used to save you space on the hard drive. You don't have to use it. Um, off is the default state. If you go to advanced, it's going to give you the most compression and therefore the most amount of playback time before the recorder starts to have to record over the top of old footage. In the storage menu, it's set up as normal. Normal means it is going to be recording 24-7. A lot of people like to try to extend that amount of time, 
So you can select motion and then using the pen tool drag across the schedule to make as much or a little of the schedule record on motion. Here I've just applied it to all days of the week. After you hit apply, go ahead and click on alarm and the first thing you're going to see is actually the motion detection window. It's enabled by default and what we're going to be looking at here is what you want as far as how you're going to trigger motion. By default, the entire screen is active and the sensitivity is set at maximum. Also, in recording, you would want to make sure that the camera is recording. This is also another default feature, not really something you have to worry about. Um, go ahead and go back out to that main screen. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear the grid. Now you can drag the mouse and create any number of active sections that you want to be able to detect motion with. And after you set up these motion areas, go ahead and hit apply. And now only when motion occurs within these grids are you going to actually have a trigger that's going to start recording motion on the NVR. So you can see only where my hand is in the grids is it actually seeing that motion's occurring. So you can set this up however you want. Right now I'm going to just make half the screen be detected same thing's going to apply. I have to go into that section of the camera before it detects motion and starts recording. And then another thing that you're going to look at in here is sensitivity. The lower the sensitivity, the more extreme the motion has to be before the recorder will deem it a motion event and start recording. You would typically use this if you're getting a lot of false recordings, like false alarms where you don't really want it to start recording things. Uh, you do need to be careful though, setting too low of a sensitivity may make it where someone walking slowly won't even activate the motion. So this is something you definitely want to play with on site to make sure you're getting the result you expect. So also with motion recording, there is a pre-record, which is the amount of time before motion occurs that it will start recording, a maximum of 60 seconds. And post-record is how long after motion stops before it will stop recording the event. So obviously, the higher the numbers are set here, the more you're going to cut into your overall storage time, but you will get a more consistent, fluid recording scenario every time that motion is occurring. So next we're going to look at network. Uh, if you know nothing about setting up an IP address on a NVR or on any device on your network, the easiest thing to do is just set DHCP, click apply, it'll get one from the router, and then you can move on to going into EasyCloud. Once the device status shows that it is online, you can go ahead and scan the QR code that's seen below with the EasyView app and it will register your NVR to your app and you'll be able to remotely access your recorder anywhere you would like. Now we're going to go over into OSD which just stands for on-screen display. The biggest one to do here is to make sure that you name all of your cameras with something that makes sense for you so that when you are looking at them on a list that you know which cameras that you're interacting with. After you've entered in the camera name, just make sure you hit apply and then just do this for each of the cameras. After we're done here, we're going to go ahead and go and look at image. Uh, if you have certain types of cameras, you actually have the choice between white light or infrared light. Uh, TriGuard and dual lights are a good example of this. Other cameras with a singular light source, such as the G series, will only have IR or the Color Hunter will only have white light. Going into exposure, uh, this is where you'll find WDR, which is wide dynamic range. So if you have a very high contrast environment where it's very bright and very dim lights, that's a good thing to look at. And then go into white balance. And here, if you're going to be using the camera outside, I do recommend setting it outdoor. Otherwise, leave it on automatic. If your camera has a microphone and you would like to use it, you can go into the audio section. In order to activate your camera's microphone, you do need to check the audio input box. And if it has a speaker, the output volume and alarm volume are here. 
By default, they are both at 100%. I do recommend bringing the output volume of the speaker down a bit because it can be a bit too loud when using it. Hit apply to save any changes and hit exit to go back out of this menu. Any additional cameras that are added to the NVR is just doing the same steps over for each camera. And once you have set them all up, then you're ready to go. Thank you for watching. And if you have any questions or comments, we would love to hear them. And we would appreciate it if you could subscribe to the channel or a thumbs up if you found this content helpful.